took a job you know, booking people into, you know, booking bikini waxes and full wax, half wax, and such an extraordinary thing to do. But I learned so much. I really love the Zeffirelli Romeo and Juliet. I became really interested in Shakespeare from that and acting and just the power of cinema. My face had been defiled <laughs> and uh, it showed me like with crazy eyes and no teeth. And I was like, wow, I've made it. <laughs> I have made it. Hi, Brian. Hi. Thank you for hanging out with me today. You're welcome. I often look back at moments where Logan has expressed kindness, love, or compassion, and wonder if he's being sincere or if he's just been fooling us. When he's sincere, he is sincere. And when he's affected, he's genuinely affected. Nothing's fake. He doesn't do fake. That's, he wouldn't tolerate fake. He's not that kind of man. I'm gonna build something bigger. Faster, wilder. I want to kill the opposition. Cut their throats. We are pirates. I've grown to really respect him. He is absolutely. Absolutely the antithesis of all I believe in, completely. You've been acting in TV and film for more than 50 years. My parents first saw you in Manhunter. I discovered your work in Super Troopers, and now Gen Z is obsessed with you as Logan Roy. Are you aware of how varied in age your fan base is? Uh, it's becoming more and more apparent. <laughs> but the thing is that I've always wanted to do the different thing. I played Captain Flanagan and... No, what's no, what's he not? He's not called Flanagan. What's he called? The captain and super troopers. It's Captain O'Hagan. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, you're gonna play that, and then I play Winston Churchill, and I play Herman Goring, and I play Hannibal Lecter. I mean, it's fantastic. You know, there's it's a great career yeah. to investigate, to be given the opportunity to investigate these extraordinary animals. You know, it's, a, it's the best job you could have. After all of this time and all of this experience, do you still feel like you're learning about acting? All the time, constantly learning. You're constantly in a state of learning. Of course you are. That's the great gift that keeps on giving in my job, is you learn. You know, you don't do this work unless there's something that you can take away from it, other than the success or the failure or what have you. And it's, it's, it's a great learning curve and it's about life. You know, that's all we do. We talk about life. We reflect life. You uh, you began acting at such a young age in your early teens. Did you ever work jobs outside of theater or acting? I I did once have I, I got there was a time when I had, I had a a crisis at the beginning eighties when I didn't know I kind of lost my way and it was also uh. It also was sort of reflected by the end of my first marriage as well. I was very diffident about stuff, you know. And so I, I took a job in a gym. Uh, I, I took a job, you know, booking people into a gym and, you know, booking bikini waxes and full wax, half wax. And it was such an extraordinary thing to do. But it was, I learned so much. And what I learned was that everybody was an actor. Everybody who came in, they had a performance. You know, these Swedish ladies would come in and I would book them their bikini wax and they said, have, have I enough seen you at one of my parties? Haven't you been to a party? And I said, no, ma'am, I've never been to one of your parties. So what do you want? Do you want full wax or just... <laughs> and I loved it. It was great. You know, it was, it was what they called, you know, it was supposed to be a touch of real life, but it wasn't. You know, people are as stupid and as fantasy driven as ever. Everybody's driven by fantasy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we all were motivated by our imaginations. And uh, it was fascinating. And I realized, my God, everybody's an actor. Well, Brian, I'm, I'm such a massive fan and I have been for so many years. And thank you for this performance and everything else you've done in your career. Uh, thank you. Fantastic. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much. Thanks for the time, Brian. Take care. Hi, Jay. Hi, David. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. 
Kieran uh, has to say some pretty gross things to you in this show. Yes, he does. Are there ever moments after the cameras stop rolling where he's just like, I'm so sorry? <laughs> no, he's <laughs> never sorry. In fact, he says some choice things when the cameras aren't rolling. He is, uh, you know, he's brilliant at insult comedy. He's very relentless. Switching gears just a little bit, what was the TV show or movie that made you want to be an actor? I really loved um, the Zeffirelli Romeo and Juliet. And that just was just, I found that so, I got so absorbed in that. Like I've really, I became really interested in Shakespeare from that and acting and just the power of cinema. I remember my father, who was very uh, formidable, not quite like Logan, but, you know, kind of a gruff person and, um, I remember we all saw it as a family and we walked out of the theater and there he was, he was teary eyed. He was moved afterwards. I was so, I really took that in. Mm. You know? Well, you've since gone on to have such an incredible career spanning more than 40 years. You've also appeared in seven episodes of various law and order series playing, that seven, right? playing seven different characters, which Holy must be. <laughs> Oh, my God. One time I, I got to be the murderess, though. Oh, yeah? I was going to ask if you remembered all seven, but I, no, I guess I not. No, I'm just shocked. I, don't, I, I guess if I went through it, maybe I would. Um, but I have all seven names. It's Miss Hill, Trudy Pomeransky, That's attorney, the murderess. Attorney Ward, Linda Drosy, Miss Moskowitz, Paula Downing, and Diana Eskus. Holy <laughs> Um, well, their, uh, their names don't ring a bell, but I do, I, I, you know, I, I have mental images of all those episodes. Oh, you're fantastic. Scared. You were fantastic. In oh, it. thank you. And thank you for taking the time with me today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye, thank Jay. you so much. Have a good day. Hi, Alan. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Do you see Connor as being the most quote unquote normal of the Roy siblings? None of us were all messed up. I don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't know. Connor is not normal. I don't, I mean, define normal, but I don't think so. And, but all the other kids, they're, you know, they're damaged goods. I mean, we're just, it's, we're, everybody's a train wreck, you know, <laughs> a lot of money, no love. Yeah. You've been fortunate enough to have performed as several iconic, recognizable characters throughout your career. When people recognize you, what is the quote they typically shout at you on the street? Oh, I guess it's that Bueller stuff of he'll keep calling me, uh, you know, or, or uh, that's like doing that stuff, that phone call to Rooney. They, they do that stuff. Yeah, That's got to be flattering. <laughs> no, it's nice. I mean, it, it's it's really I'm happy to have been part of something that people still enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. What was the TV show or movie that made you want to be an actor? My dad, uh, he was an interesting guy. He liked Italian singers, Jewish comics, and British actors. And um, so when I was a kid, he would take me to see things like A Man for All Seasons with Paul Schofield. And we watched Beckett on TV. And we watched on uh, uh, PBS, the, the Six Wives of Henry VIII and uh, Elizabeth R., and he was crazy about all that stuff. And so it was really those things. It was it was really those British dramas, which, you know, is not me, but uh, uh, is not my wheelhouse. But uh, that was what got me going. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you ever saw yourself on a poster or a billboard or a marquee of some sorts? Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I did a uh, um, I did the tour of the producers uh, the you know the musical, and uh, we were in Washington D.C. and they had those long uh, uh, ads on the side of a bus. And Louis Stadlin, my friend, was at one end, and I was at the other. And um, my face had been defiled, <laughs> and uh, it showed me like with crazy eyes and no teeth, and performing a sexual act on uh, um, uh, Louis. And I was like, "Wow, I've made it! <laughs> I have made it!" I've been defiled on the side of a, a city bus. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> well, I was just like, oh, oh, yeah, well. Um, I know you've had a long, occasionally rocky, but ultimately successful journey from Ferris Bueller to this massive show now. When you see actors like Ki Hui Kwan and Brendan Fraser and Michelle Yeoh win Oscars, 
What does that say to you about the state of Hollywood today? Well, I think the most valuable asset you can have is persistence. Because if this is what, you know, you know you're born to do. I mean, you've had feedback that you're good at this from people who know what they're talking about. Getting a job or getting the perfect job, none of this is up to us. You know, somebody presents you with some material and you're like, well, this is what I can do with it. What do you think? And it's not your job to give yourself the job. Um, so I think persistence is key, um, which is hard because sometimes it's uh, it, it can be very discouraging. This is a great job. It's never, ever boring. Never. It can be heartbreaking, but it's never, ever boring. And so I just think if you stick with it, Michelle Yeoh, I mean, I know deserves, the word deserve has nothing to do with anything, but uh, she's been working so long. She's so beautiful. And, uh, you know, she's been cast uh, as an action star for so long. And it was just so wonderful to see her just show everybody what she can do. And so it's thrilling. It's, it, it's really uh, heartening uh, to see people like that succeed in such a big way. Well, I've, I've been happy to see you succeed as well, Alan. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Why does everyone ask how I'm feeling? I got done a huge deal. I got the election. I got ATN. I got plenty on my plate. He's on the floor, Tom. Explain to me what he's doing. He's moseying, terrifyingly moseying. It's like if Santa Claus was a hitman. We were cut out behind our backs. But there's a shape for things for us. We partner up with Sandy and Stewie, with Pierce. Death wrestling ogres. Excited to get into this knife fight? Let's blow it up. I'm not authorized to let you take off. It's that. You know, in Buddhism, sometimes your greatest tormentor can also be your most perceptive teacher. Mm -hmm. Hey, Buddha, nice Tom Fords. There's a night of the long knives coming. I need a fire breather. Your help with maths. You really want me? I need you. Mr. Mankin, my most unworthy opponent. Still clinging to your slice of pie. Where are you at now? One percent. The fear is uh, it could get squeezed. Squeezed down? Mm -hmm. From one? Because that's the lowest number. I love you, but you are not serious people. I have it on good authority. There is a kill list. Ken, is your head on straight? We've been schooled by a barbarian that goes by the name Logan Roy. I mean, he's out of control. You want to clear the air? You're a snake. You have hurt me more than you can possibly imagine. I have some concerns about your old man. I will sue, and I will go public. You point your finger at me, I point my finger at you. We are going to grind you down, man. We are sand in the gears. I hate you. Do you understand that? Loud and clear. Good. Done. I'm going to build something bigger, faster, wilder. I want to kill the opposition. Cut their throats. We are fine.